The world's largest and most powerful space telescope has revealed unprecedented views of Jupiter. The James Webb Telescope took the pictures of the solar system's biggest planet. For months, astronomers said 3 Atlas would be a spectacular flyby. It was supposed to skim past Mars, put on a show, and then vanish into the dark. But new data from the James Webb Space Telescope changed everything. What once looked harmless now looks deliberate. The path shifted, the behavior changed, and scientists who first called it a comet are now asking a far darker question. Might 3 Atlas be aiming for Mars? When the object was first seen on July 1st, it looked like any fast visitor from outside the solar system. It was a blur moving at extraordinary speed. Observers measured nearly 87 kilometers per second relative to the sun. At that pace, it covers the Earth-Moon distance in under 90 minutes. That fact alone was startling, but velocity was not the only odd thing. The real puzzle was the way it moved and how it reacted to the sun. Most comets slow or break up as they near the inner system. Their dust and ice fall away in chaotic jets driven by sunlight. Three Atlas behaved differently. Instead of slowing, it showed small but steady acceleration. Its path tightened. Tiny course changes appeared in the tracking data. The coma, the glowing envelope of gas and dust around the object, brightened fast. Within weeks, it grew far brighter than expected. Spectra added more mystery. Telescopes saw spikes in ultraviolet energy. They also recorded carbon dioxide outgassing at rates never seen from a comet. The emissions looked too organized to be random. Pieces of the behavior formed a pattern. And then Webb's deep sensors found a signal no one had predicted, rhythmic pulses from the tail. These were not the random erratic jets produced as ice sublimates. The pulses repeated at almost perfect 17-minute intervals. They looked like timed bursts. Scientists across observatories began to use words they had avoided for decades. Maneuver, thrust, control, the exhaust seemed to act like tiny thrusters, nudging the object in precise ways. When teams at Webb, Gemini South, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory kept watching, their models told a troubling story. A near miss had become a narrow miss. A narrow miss could become an impact. A revised impact distance appeared in the simulations, roughly 1.95 million kilometers from Mars. That is small in cosmic terms. More worrying, the simulations showed how little was needed to change the final outcome. 10 kilometers per second of extra velocity could be enough to shift 3 Atlas into a direct hit. Those 17-minute pulses already added measurable speed. Each outburst was a tiny change, but tiny changes stack. The more they happened, the more the path could move toward Mars. Radar returns made the debate more urgent. Bounces from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and from Goldstone showed echoes that did not match a normal comet. They were sharp, metallic-like, not soft and watery as one would expect. Insiders shared descriptions of echoes unlike anything in radar history. Amateur high-exposure images added odd green needle-like streams. The streams seemed to converge on Mars. They pulsed in sync with the tail bursts. Taken together, the picture looked less like a random chunk of frozen rock and more like a controlled vehicle using its own gas as micro-thrusters to steer. Avi Lowe, an astrophysicist at Harvard, became one of the more visible voices urging caution. He and his team wrote a paper that proposed a difficult idea. What if 3 Atlas was engineered? What if it was not just a natural visitor, but a probe of some kind? The data gave them reasons for that thought. Radar reflections, engineered materials and spectra, outgassing patterns that matched controlled firing sequences. These were not the usual signs of a simple comet. The scientific community split between skepticism and alarm. If 3 Atlas were deliberate, what would it want? Lowe suggested a scenario that read like science fiction, but came from data. The object might be targeting Mars to crash or to deliver something. Probes, signals, biological material. He used careful language, but the implication was stark. Mars is a busy place. It hosts orbiters, landers, rovers, and experiments that have spent decades hunting for past or present life. An impact could erase machines and the records they hold. It could also change a fragile planetary environment in ways scientists have not fully modeled. The scale of the potential impact magnified the fear. Estimates put 3 Atlas's mass at about 10 billion tons and its speed near 50 to 60 kilometers per second relative to Mars. At those numbers, an impact would release energy measured in millions of megatons. The blast would dwarf any human weapon ever made. A crater of many tens of kilometers across could form. Debris would litter Martian orbit. Some fragments might be thrown into paths that eventually cross Earth. The immediate damage would be catastrophic for science on Mars. The long-term risks for Earth were less clear, but non-zero. 
Beyond shock and destruction, people worried about contamination. Mars has places that could hide signs of life. Subsurface pockets of water and ancient sediments have been prime targets for astrobiology. If three atlas carried organic molecules or engineered biological material, an impact could seed those pockets. That could be a form of directed panspermia. Instead of life spreading from Mars to Earth, life could be carried to Mars by an outsider. The biological risk was not merely hypothetical. Webb's spectrographs picked up traces that raised eyebrows. Molecules resembling synthetic polymers, bits like carbon nanotubes mixed with natural gases. Isotopic ratios of carbon and hydrogen did not match known solar system signatures. These were anomalies that suggested non-local origin. Webb's team treated the deepest scans as sensitive information. A portion of the data stayed classified for 48 hours before a limited release. Leaks turned up in forums and private channels. People debated whether those leaks were real or the work of pranksters. But when independent teams cross-checked, they found strands that could not be dismissed easily. The spectral fingerprints hinted at engineered materials. That alone does not prove intent. But when combined with steering pulses, radar echoes, and converging green beams, the notion of a deliberate visitor hardened. As public interest spiked, official channels grew quiet. NASA's usual stream of open telemetry and friendly updates slowed. Feeds from Perseverance and Tianwen once showed gaps. Press officers deflected questions. Behind closed doors, planetary defense groups from multiple agencies were talking. ESA, Roscosmos, CNSA, and JAXA all moved into high-level discussions. The problem was not one any single agency could solve alone. There was no known method to deflect an object like 3 Atlas at the speed and mass it carried. The conversation shifted from stopping the object to preparing for possible outcomes. A whistleblower inside one mission described an unusual phrase circulating in internal channels. Impact protocol initiated. That got attention because no public plan had ever used that wording. The claim was that encrypted signals were being sent to operational Mars assets. If true, the signals might be attempts to ready those machines for a sudden event, or they might be tests. Some speculated the signals were beacons meant to be detected. If three Atlas were intelligent or responsive to certain energy patterns, turning certain systems on might change how it reacted. That would mean Earth had not just noticed the object, but had signaled to it. In other words, the object may now know it is being watched and responded to. Cryptographers at a private institute took a different tack. They converted the object's flight path and timing into binary sequences. Then they compressed the data using algorithms common in deep space messaging. The result looked structured. Repeating blocks matched atomic numbers for elements like carbon, oxygen, silicon, and iron. Interspersed were prime number sequences and regular spacings used in known signal protocols. When the researchers mapped the numbers, the pattern suggested the motion itself could be a message. The intervals and the pulses were part of a communicative event. That idea unsettled many. It meant the object might be communicating not by radio, but by the way it moved and by the rhythms it emitted. Adding to the mystery was the target area on Mars. Three Atlas's trajectory crossed a corridor over Elysium Planitia, a region long known for odd surface shapes. Concentric ridges, spiral flows, and patterns resembling Fibonacci spirals appear there. In the center of one small, perfectly circular basin sits a deposit of crystalline silicates with unusual refractive properties. Under sunlight, they emit brief infrared pulses at regular intervals. Some scientists had once called the deposit a geological curiosity. Now they asked whether it was a rendezvous point, a beacon, or were part of something far older and more deliberate. The web team also noticed a secondary shadow trailing three atlas at a fixed distance of about 0.07 astronomical units. It was neither debris nor gas. Radar could not detect it. Infrared gave it no heat signature. But photometric analysis showed a clear dip in light that moved with the main body. The shadow traced a perfect orbital path as if tethered. It kept exact spacing even when three atlas accelerated. Theories multiplied. Some suggested a secondary object or drone. Some said a memory field or gravitational artifact. No consensus formed. The single fact that something was following in perfect unison added another layer of complexity. Across disciplines, researchers found more resonances. Dates in the object's alignment with the Sun, Earth, and Mars fell on rare orbital harmonics. Some of those alignments matched dates known to ancient cultures for astronomical events. September 23rd, October 5th, and November 11th appeared in the timing. 
A handful of scholars pointed to historical records and argued that similar orbital arrangements coincided with notable events in past centuries. That claim is controversial in academia. Still, the synchronous dates added to the sense that this event was not simply a one-off random arrival. Stranger still were findings about Mars itself. Instruments on orbiters began to pick up unusual signals tied to the planet's interior. Shortly before the closest approach, ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter reported a spike in xenon isotopes rising from the surface rather than falling from space. Seismic sensors recorded increased activity near Cerberus Fossae, and temperatures below the crust rose by several Kelvin. Magnetometers detected a faint, repeating magnetic pulse that matched the 17-minute interval seen in three Atlas's tail emissions. Those measurements suggested something under Mars's skin had started to move on its own rhythm. For the first time, researchers considered that Mars might be reacting, not just waiting. Then came a truly unsettling match. Infrasound detectors picked up low-frequency signals from under Olympus Mons. The waveform, when analyzed, mirrored the spiral patterns in three Atlas's light curve. The signal repeated in harmonics and formed a spectrogram with shapes similar to those emitted by the object as it neared the sun. If the planet was responding, it raised questions about pre-existing mechanisms or reservoirs that might be tuned to the same frequencies. Was Mars echoing the object, or was it communicating back? While the world watched the clock, Math and biology teams found still more coincidences. The pulsing pattern of the object could be decomposed into sequences that formed Fibonacci-based spirals. Those spirals show up in nature and in the way some systems encode information. Neurobiology experiments found that when human subjects were exposed to the 17-minute light curve pattern, their brain waves showed synchronized responses across isolated groups. The effect was modest and hard to reproduce at scale, but it hinted at a kind of entrainment. If three Atlas's emissions can influence complex systems at a distance, the implications are profound. The final days before the projected close approach felt surreal. Old thermal scans were re-examined. Data from decades ago showed tiny heat anomalies in Utopia Planitia that had been dismissed as noise. Now those spots matched new patterns. Scientists who had once said this was impossible began to hedge. The idea that three Atlas might be a message, a machine, or a seed of some kind moved from the fringe to the center of scientific debate. Policymakers faced a choice between urgent transparency and measured caution. Communication channels tightened. The public clamored for facts. Agencies released what they could without causing panic. In the end, the most unsettling truth was uncertainty itself. The data forced unusual collaboration. Astronomers, planetary geologists, engineers, cryptographers, and biologists shared models and ran simulations side by side. Each discipline could explain parts of the puzzle, but none could explain it all. Patterns suggested design. Materials hinted at manufacture. Planetary responses hinted at preconditioning. Brainwaves hinted at a resonance that touched minds as well as machines. The timeline to impact, or miss, was measured in days. Every new observation changed the odds. The story of Three Atlas is not yet finished. What Webb showed was a shift in how humanity must think about foreign objects in space. The sky is no longer a passive stage. It can be active, deliberate, and in ways that test the edges of current science. Whether Three Atlas ultimately collides with Mars or slips past, it has already changed the questions scientists ask. It has pushed them to plan for the unexpected. Objects that steer, that carry unfamiliar materials, that may act like messages in motion. For now, the world watches instruments and models. Teams prepare for impact mitigation, for debris tracking, and for biosecurity measures on Mars missions. They prepare also for the simple human response, fear mixed with wonder. If Three Atlas is engineered, what does that say about the makers? If it is natural but behaving like a machine, what processes can do such a thing? If it is a message, what does it want to tell us? No final answer exists yet, but James Webb's deep look has forced an honest recalculation. The visitor that began as a curious blip is now a complex event that crosses science, policy, and philosophy. It reminds humanity that the universe can surprise with both beauty and threat. It shows how quickly the boundary between natural and artificial can blur in the cold, dark reaches between stars. As the clock runs down, the eyes of the world remain fixed on the data streams. Observatories keep watching, space agencies keep planning, and in labs, teams keep testing the idea that motion itself can be a message. Whatever happens next, 3 Atlas has already left its mark on how people think about space. It has forced a new question. When the universe moves with intent, will humanity be ready to listen and to respond?